Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Adisasa tutorial on the registration of restriction application. A restriction can be registered against a property for the purposes of compulsory acquisition, the prevention of any fraud or improper dealing, or for any other sufficient cause. Additionally, a restriction may be expressed to endure for a particular period until the occurrence of a particular event or until a further order is made by the relevant authority. The process is initiated by a registered advocate and he or she must also be registered on the Adisasa platform. However, it should be noted that a land registrar can register a restriction on a property as he or she considers fit. To begin with, you log into the platform, enter your Adisasa user credentials, that is the identification number or the Adisasa ID, and the password you used when creating your account. Key in your Adisasa ID, enter your password, and then click continue. When you do so, you'll be provided with a one-time password code, an OTP, to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and then click log in. You'll then be navigated to the dashboard. It's important to note that when you first log in, the account you're logged in as is your private account. For you to initiate a registration of a restriction application, you will need to switch to your advocate account. So you do so by clicking on the profile icon and it will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you. Switch to your advocate account and you'll be able to proceed and initiate this application. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube tutorial on how to upgrade your account through the link in the video description. The process we are undertaking is under land registration. So navigate to the land registration section and click view more and you'll find the application listed under the services offered in this department. Upon clicking on it, you'll be navigated to the applications page and here there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs namely pending, ongoing, completed, rejected, and cancelled. All the applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided depending on the level of processing of your application. The pending tab is for the application that you have initiated as an advocate but have not completed it or they still need some action from your side or from the party or parties involved in the application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have submitted as an advocate but it's up to the ministry side through the relevant officials to process the application. The completed tab is for applications which have been approved by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. The reasons will be communicated to you on the application. The cancel tab is for applications that have been canceled by the different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the new application tab on the top right hand corner. You will then be navigated to a page with the FAQs, which is the frequently asked questions related to this process. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to get some of the terminologies used. When you are satisfied with the FAQs, you can proceed and click Next. The next section is on proprietorship details. Here, you'll first be required to enter the parcel number. So kindly key it in in the format registry slash block and then the block number with no space in between slash the parcel number. You'll also need to enter the Adsasa ID of the applicant. So kindly do so and then click on search. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the applicant. It can either be the mentioned proprietor executing on his or her own behalf or an attorney executing on behalf of the proprietor. If you choose the attorney option, you'll key in the power of attorney entry number in the format registry forward slash the entry number forward slash the month of registration forward slash the year of registration and then click on search. And the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her Adisasa ID. If the Adisasa ID does not feature, it means the attorney is not registered on Adisasa and thus you will be required to enter the Adisasa ID of said attorney and then click on save. Alternatively, you can choose the self option instead, as will be the case in this, and then click on the save button. Upon doing so, the name of the proprietor, as well as the person executing on behalf of the proprietor will be listed. You can then go ahead and click on next, and you'll be navigated to the restriction details page. Here, you'll first be required to select the nature of restriction. There are three options to choose from. For starters, we have absolute, meaning that the applicant wishes to prevent the registration of all documents with no exceptions whatsoever. Alternatively, 
We have subject to consent of the owner, meaning that the restriction prevents any entry from being made into the register unless the property owner or owners agree to the same. Lastly, we have transaction is subject to restriction, meaning that the restriction is barring the registration of a particular transaction in the register as is determined by the property owner or owners. In our case, the option that we'll be going with is subject to the consent of the owner. We'll then enter the ground of restriction. In our case, it's suspected fraudulent activities. You then move on to the law firm details, where you'll need to provide the details of the law firm that you're acting under. Here, you have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on Azizasa, where you'll be required to type in the Azizasa ID of the law firm and then click on search, and the law firm details will be automatically populated. However, in our case, you'll be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, you'll provide the name of the law firm, also provide the physical address of the law firm, provide the postal address of the law firm, you'll enter the phone number of the law firm, and you'll also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website and the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information required if applicable. You can then go ahead and click on Next. The next section is the document section. This is where you'll be required to provide the additional provisions, which are any supporting documents to aid the processing of your application. For instance, a letter from the DCI office outlining active fraud investigations concerning the property. So go ahead and click on Choose File, and you'll be navigated to your local machine or device, whereby you'll upload the documents you have prepared, and the document will be listed again as the Choose File button. If you have additional documents, you have the option of providing said documents. If you're satisfied with what you've provided, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through them. If satisfied, you can click on Submit. You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You'll then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been created successfully and then click on close. So after you have submitted your application, the next step is for the party or parties involved to consent to the application. They'll receive an SMS, email and system notification informing them of the same. And it will also prompt them to access the AdSasa accounts and verify the application. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. After the application verification section, we have the execution section where you can accept whether to represent the parties listed. So if you as an advocate choose to accept to represent all the parties involved, you will click on accept. And if you do not represent some of the parties involved, you can click on reject and the parties involved will get a notification and they will have an option of selecting or adding another advocate to represent them. So in our case, we'll choose to accept to represent all the parties involved. Once you have accepted or executed on this, you can proceed and append a signature as an advocate. However, in our case, the advocate will hold out on appending his or her signature until the parties involved have verified and signed on the application. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the party or parties involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. As such, once each party has logged in, he or she will navigate to the Registration of Restriction application on the Land Registration section and then click on the View option. An OTP box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. If the individual or individuals is aware of the process and approves of it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. A key thing to note is that below the OTP prompt box, there's an important disclaimer for the party involved. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code if he or she authorizes the application made on his or her own behalf by the advocate involved in the process. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and then click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified, so he or she will go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section, there's the execution section. Here, the party verifying this application can change the advocate representing him or her if the initial advocate rejected representation. Upon clicking on the change button, 
The individual will then enter the Add Sasa ID of the new advocate to represent him or her, and then click on the Change Advocate button below. That advocate will then get a notification prompting him or her to accept representation. The individual will then navigate to the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to do this. To begin with, there is this signing area here, as you can see, which allows you to sign with a computer mouse if you're using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you're using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the other option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on Ajisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the proprietor will sign on the signing area, he or she will place the mouse cursor on the signing area, press and hold the left click button and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there's the option of removing it by clicking on clear and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with it, he or she will click on save. There's a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as a signature, then click on yes. As mentioned earlier, the advocate and the party or parties involved are in active communication during the verification process. As such, once the latter has done his or her bit, the advocate will be notified and he or she will then navigate to the application details page. As an advocate, on your screen, under the application verification section, you'll see the status on verification by the involved party under the OTP status and you'll also see the signature status as well. And in our case, the proprietor has both verified and signed. As you can recall, you, the advocate, held out on signing earlier on until the proprietor had verified and signed on the application. With that done, you can go ahead and append your signature. You can either sign on the signing pad area using your mouse and click on save. The second option is signing with another device using the four aforementioned options. So proceed and append your signature and then click save. This is a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as a signature. Click on yes. In doing so, you'll have completed the application up to the point of accepting execution and the party or parties involved consenting to the application. So once you and the party or parties involved have performed your respective roles, the submit request option will be active and upon clicking on it, you'll be prompted to affirm the submission of your request, then click on yes and the application will transition to the Land Registration Department for processing and approval. Once the application has been approved, you'll get a notification on the same both on SMS as well as on email, and you can also access said notification through the notification bell on the top right-hand corner of the screen. At that point, the application will be at 100% on the progress bar. To affirm the registration of the restriction, the proprietor or proprietors can log into the account, Navigate to the My Properties tab, select the View button on the parcel in question, select the Proprietorship tab, select the Proprietorship Section Entries option, and he or she will see the restriction as the latest entry on the register. That's it for this tutorial on the registration of restriction application. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comment section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button alongside the subscribe button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Thanks for watching and goodbye.